asset protection and prenuptial agreements. Coming up. Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nesto from Attaboy Cowboy and on this channel we give you health and wealth tips to help you be more successful. Now today I'm filming in Buenaventura, Colombia and I was just talking about prenuptial agreements recently with a buddy so I thought I'd share some of this with you, my personal experience. So a little bit about me, I recently, a few years ago, met someone on the internet from another country and the person seemed pretty nice and they were in a pretty dire financial situation which is often the case when you meet someone from other countries and her family was in a bad situation and I thought hey you know what I'm gonna get married to this person help them get their citizenship and then they can start working and everything will be good for everybody right so I decided to get a prenuptial agreement I talked to a friend who's an attorney and you know he gave me the whole the whole rundown of how everything worked and I was told that I should get her attorney, so I got her an attorney, I got myself an attorney. Uh, you always wanna get an attorney for each party, by the way, that's rule number one, okay? Because if you only have an attorney and the other person doesn't, then they can say, well, hey, I got coerced or I didn't understand what's going on, so I wasn't properly represented. So that's the first thing. Make sure both of you have an attorney. It is expensive, but you do need to have two attorneys for it to be a solid prenup okay rule number two make sure <laughs> you get an attorney that specializes in family law if you don't you're gonna be screwed okay in my situation my friend that helped me was a patent attorney and the attorney representing the other person another attorney that I personally knew and I hired was a criminal defense attorney and I thought hey an attorney's an attorney and you know, both of them had had a little experience in family law and they said, yeah, yeah, this will work. You know, they gave me a prenup and said, okay, cool. And I thought, all right, all right I trusted them. You know, and, they, and of course my friend meant well, but, it, but again, when it comes to legal things, you don't want to mess around. Don't try to save any money, okay? I paid like 500 bucks or something and it ended up costing me over 100,000 for the mistakes I made. And I'll take responsibility for it as you should because you're the one that's in charge, right? You can always like sue and all that stuff, but you really just need to figure things out on your own in this world. You can't really depend on other people to do the heavy work for you. Again, we well, got two attorneys. Uh, this person, my ex, spoke Spanish, so we got to translate to Spanish. You know, she signed it, she agreed to it. We got it notarized with her signature. I mean, I thought I covered everything. She said that, oh, I'd never do that. I would never sue you. I said, yeah, okay, fine. And she says, yeah, I don't have a problem. I'll sign it, okay. I think she was just happy to get her papers. So that was number two. So number two, get family law attorneys. Don't get attorneys that specialize in other things, okay? Now, rule number three, <laughs> if you marry someone and their first language is not English, it doesn't matter what language it is. You have to hire a licensed, interpreter that was our third mistake both of those attorneys overlooked that and both of them tried to do the best they could but they both screwed up when my when we decided to get divorced and her divorce attorney looked at the prenup she saw it wasn't translated by a licensed translator it's game over okay they could just say why well, you know what I'll signing all right so you would think okay Normally liability would fall on her attorney. So she could turn around and attorneys do carry malpractice insurance. She could have sued her attorney and said, hey, you know, you owe me a million dollars or whatever it is you owe me because you screwed up my divorce. But in this case, and just keep, keep track of this or just remember this, attorneys are tricky, okay? And they're only on your side when it's in their interest. When it's not in your interest, they're not on your side, okay? I hired her attorney, it's someone I had known for over a decade. I have hired that person for multiple other cases. So the guy knew me, and I thought he was doing me a favor, he gave me a good rate. Okay, 
when the issue of him not having a translator was presented to him and the, the prospect of him possibly getting sued, guess what he said? He said, I don't know who that person is. And I was like, what? I mean, he didn't deny he knew me because he had payments for me and lots of correspondence with me. He denied knowing my ex or ever meeting her. So my attorney said, well, what are you talking about? Here's payments, we have all this communication. The attorney gave a veiled threat. He said, well, I kind of remember Ernesto, that's me, trying to coerce someone into doing something they didn't want to do. And I thought, whoa. Well, I, I talk, talked to my divorce attorney, who was a real family law attorney. And she said, dude, there's not much you can do. You're gonna go to court and it's not gonna go well. And when she called that attorney and tried to talk to him, he was pretty dirty. He is dirty, the defense attorney. Uh, he said, if it off, you know, off the record, of course, to my attorney, if you take me to court, I'm gonna say a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna make a bunch of things up about Ernesto and make sure that he loses his case. So he basically didn't want to be bothered and he didn't care a dime about me. So he kind of hung me out to dry, even though I had hired him for his services. So just remember, no one is on your side, okay? Including your spouse. As soon as the tide turns, like the tide's behind me, it's a whole different ball game and they act totally different, okay? In my divorce, it was like night and day. It's like I didn't even recognize the person. So make sure you get a proper prenup that covers everything. Make sure it's translated if you need it to be and make sure you have two attorneys and make sure it's notarized. And in my case, when I went to trial, it, I could have fought and used my prenup, but it just would have been too expensive. In my case, it was better just to try to settle but again, my ex didn't want to settle, so at the end, ended up costing me about 100,000. It could have been a lot worse, so I'm grateful. It actually worked out quite well. But if I would have just hired the proper attorney, uh, a prenup would have cost me, a real prenup with real experienced attorneys would have cost me about 5,000, and that would have been covered. In fact, my family law attorney, her name is Toby Waxman, out of Culver City. She's probably the best attorney I've ever used for any type of lawsuit. And she's very thorough. She told me you can actually get out of paying uh, support, spouse support for life if you do your prenup properly. Again, you're not trying to cheat anybody. You're not trying to do anything bad. You're just trying to defend yourself. Just in case. Sometimes things don't go the way you'd like them to. And don't be blinded by love and all this other stuff. You can be in love and still be secure and protect yourself. And that's exactly what you do. So from Buenaventura, Colombia, this is Dr. Ernesto. Thank you for listening and goodbye.